What is up Frig fam? Corbin here again from Northwest Scent. So during like the first month or two of my channel, I did a mini series, I think I made maybe three or four videos, going over my top five fragrances, focusing around a certain note, and I really haven't done it since then, I'm not sure why. So I kinda wanted to kick that off again, start doing those videos, and I thought why not? We're here in the middle of summer, let's focus on some citrus fragrances, and why not start with my favorite citrus note, which is grapefruit. There is something with grapefruit where it has this bitter edge, but also can be a little bit sweet, it's very juicy, mouth-watering, zesty smelling. It just smells amazing to my nose. So again, that's what we're going to be talking about today. My top five grapefruit heavy fragrances. So if you guys want to hear all about them, then please stick around. But first, let's roll that intro. All right guys, welcome back from the intro. And like I already said, this is gonna be my top five grapefruit forward fragrances list. Although we are gonna be talking about an honorable mention as well. And it's just an honorable mention because I do not own the fragrance, but I have tried it. I did like it. So let's kick it off with that one. Okay, so starting the video off here with the honorable mention, again, this is one that I do not own, but I was able to try it at Macy's and they did let me sample it from my skin, so I kind of got a full wearing out of it. So this is a new release. It's coming from the house of Dolce & Gabbana and it is light blue forever. And I know you guys have heard this by now. It seems like everybody on YouTube has been talking about it. It's kind of been beaten to death, honestly, but it is a pretty solid fragrance. It smells really nice and honestly, really high quality and natural. It's not a synthetic fragrance like some of the other Dolce & Gabbana fragrances. It is completely a grapefruit dominated fragrance. I would say like over half of it, especially in the opening again It's just grapefruit and you kind of get like little sprinkles of these other notes mixed in in the dry down So when you first spray it on again, it's a natural grapefruit So it's not synthetic smelling it smells like you went to the supermarket You grab the grapefruit from the shelf and you cut it in half and you shove your nose into it That's exactly how it smells very tart juicy zesty a little bit bitter with a very very small touch of sweetness as well As it does dry down it does get a little bit greener because there's a vetiver in here There's patchouli and then some violet leaf as well and even a little bit of musk and some ozonic notes so it is a very clean fragrance overall again it does go a little bit green and not dirty in the dry down but even into that dry down you're still getting a lot of that grapefruit and that's what this fragrance is all about so if you're after something that is just grapefruit and that's basically it definitely check out Dolce & Gabbana light blue forever Okay, so starting the top five off here, we are gonna be talking about a very popular fragrance, although I do not think this one is known for being a grapefruit fragrance. Lots of people talk about some different notes in this one. To my nose, I get a ton of grapefruit with some other free notes mixed in there as well. So this is coming from the house of Roger Parfums, and this is Elysium, and I have the Parfum Pour Homme version, although, you could put the Parfum Cologne or even the Eau de Parfum, you know, if you have that one because it's discontinued. I mean, they're all dominated by grapefruit, but this is the one I have. So like I said, very grapefruit heavy. There are a bunch of other citruses in here as well. There's lemon, bergamot, and lime. So it kind of does smell just like a, a citrus concoction, but to my nose, I am getting that very sharp, astringent kind of grapefruit, which it's kind of known for. And in this case, it's working with the juniper berries as well. So again, it's a very sharp opening, but not in an off-putting way. It's just very zesty. There's also black currant in here and apple. So it is a little bit fruity sweet, especially after that sharpness kind of settles down. And there's a very dominant vetiver note in ambergris in here as well, with some other herbal notes and a little bit of a floral touch. So this is classified as a like a modern fougere. It does not smell like a fougere at all to my nose. This smells more like a citrus aromatic with a very heavy emphasis on some green notes. So it's really fantastic smelling. Again, very clean, very complex, especially for a light citrusy fragrance like it is. And again, if you like stuff that has grapefruit in it, check this one out because it is the most dominant note to my nose. So again, this one is popular for a reason. It smells really appealing. It's an awesome fragrance. Yeah, it is a little expensive because it's a Raja Parfum, but if you guys are after something like this, this is what you have to get because there's really nothing else out there that smells like it. So again, from the house of Raja Parfums, this was Elysium Parfum Pour Homme. So the next one is a designer fragrance, although this one you can almost consider a niche fragrance just based on the price point and kind of what they're going after. I, I, the fragrances from this house are kind of similar to the Tom Ford Private Blends. You know, they're very expensive. They come with a nice presentation and some of them are quite unique. I do not find this one to be overly unique though, unfortunately, but it does smell really, really good. So this is coming from the house of Louis Vuitton and this is Lamentate. Oh my gosh, yeah, this stuff smells amazing. Like the reason it's here in this video is because it's very grapefruit heavy and I do think 
even though it's not like a unique style of DNA, it, it is just kind of a fresh, musky, woody, lightly sweet, spicy style of fragrance. You see a lot of that out there, but to be honest, I cannot think of anything else that does smell like this one. So the, this particular DNA is pretty unique, but just kind of the overall concept of, the, of this fragrance has been done quite a bit. So you get a lot of grapefruit in here. There's ginger, you do get some watery notes, sage, geranium, ambroxan. Man, I can't stop smelling this. And then amber. So you do get, I would say, especially in the opening, equal amounts of that ginger and then the grapefruit. It is a zesty grapefruit again, but you actually do get a little bit of sweetness here, which I really like. And I think part of that sweetness is coming from the amber, even though it's not really a resinous smell. It, it gets just kind of like a syrupy sweetness. And the ginger, very fresh, has a little bit of kind of a spicy bite to it, but it's not a heavy one like you see maybe in Five O'Clock Eau de Jambre from Serge Luton's. You know, that is quite a dark ginger. And then the watery notes, there is kind of like a watery aqueous feel to this fragrance overall. And then a really standout note to me as well is the sage. You get that in fragrances like the Y line from Yves Saint Laurent. They have kind of that unique sweet quality to them. Well, that's coming from the sage and you get a lot of that in here. And then you do get a lot of that ambroxan. I don't find it super screechy in here. It's kind of bringing like a synthetic woody vibe to my nose. And again, overall this stuff smells really pleasant. You know, is this stuff overpriced? Probably, should I have paid full retail? Probably not. You know, do I really like the way it smells? Yes, this stuff smells fantastic. So take it as you will, you know, is it worth $265 to you? I don't know. One thing for certain though, is this thing smells absolutely fantastic and it is very grapefruit heavy, which again, that's why it's here in this video. So again, from the house of Louis Vuitton, this was La Mensite. Okay, so up next here at the number three spot, we have a flanker of a Latin American themed line of fragrances. And this one does go in a much fresher direction than its counterparts. So this is coming from the house of Ormond Jane, and we are talking about Montebacco Verano. Now I'll be honest here, the other flankers in this line are not super like dense, even though they do focus around denser notes like tobacco and stuff like that. There's something with the Ormond Jane house where their, their fragrances, even if they're a dense style of fragrance, they kind of have more of an aerated nature to them. They just feel less dense, if that makes sense. And now they've taken that DNA and they made it even fresher here. This is a very uplifting grapefruit fragrance. So just like the originals, you do get tobacco in here, you get woody notes. I think you get some leather as well or suede. And then the most dominant note in here is the grapefruit, which is a really realistic grapefruit. To my nose, this is one of the more realistic grapefruits. It does have a touch of sweetness, but again, it has more of this tart, kind of astringent, bitter quality, but that's not in a bad way. It does smell really, really nice. Again, it's very refreshing because of that. And you do get that Montebacco DNA down under. Again, it's kind of like a very light tobacco with some very supple woody notes and then like a suede kind of accord as well. It works really Really well here with the grapefruit even though it may sound dark again because of those heavier notes it's just how Orm and Jane does their fragrances they come across very light and working with this realistic grapefruit it smells absolutely amazing and very unique for a grapefruit fragrance as well so this is definitely one of the ones that I recommend you guys check out it was a limited production fragrance they do not make this one anymore but there's still lots of stock out there you guys can find this on multiple retailers and I'll try and link some down below if you guys are interested definitely want to recommend you sample first though because it is pretty expensive considering you can only get this in this 50 mil here. So again, from the house of Ormond Jane, this was Montebacco Verano. Okay, so up next here at the number two spot, we have the most affordable option here for this video. You can find this one for about 70 or $80 at discounters, and that is for the 100 mil size. And I'll be honest, I'm not sure if this one has been discontinued or not. It's pretty hard to find this like at retailers. Again, like I said, it'll pop up at discounters sometimes for a pretty good price, but it's kind of hit or miss. So this is coming from the house of Christian Dior, and this is Eau Sauvage Cologne, not the Eau de Toilette. Make sure it's the Cologne with the white band. And this is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, like under $100 citrus fragrances. So of course, a lot of these niche ones smell really nice, but they're also very expensive. For something that's in normal designer price territory, this is my absolute favorite. And basically what this one is like in the Cliff Notes version is Dior Homme Cologne, but just with more depth and a little bit of sweetness. It is more than that. This has everything that Dior Homme Cologne has, but Dior Homme Cologne does not have everything that this one has. So of course this features grapefruit. There is also some bergamot in here and then a little bit of mandarin orange 
orange. And to my nose, the mandarin orange does make this one a little bit better because it brings a little bit of sweetness. There's also pedigrain in here and then hedione. The hedione mixing with the citruses and then that pedigrain, you're almost getting like an Italian cologne vibe, but not quite. This doesn't really go in that direction. This is again, mostly a citrus balm with some green touches and then a very light kind of white floral um, support, but it is kind of going that way. And there's actually vetiver here as well, bringing mostly a woodiness, maybe a little bit of a green feel. It's not a dirty vetiver. This fragrance is ultra, ultra clean, very refreshing. You could wear this in the hottest weather imaginable. You can spray this thing on 20 times. It's not gonna choke people out. Again, it's that kind of citrus fragrance. It's a very nice, decently realistic smelling grapefruit as well, especially for the price point. And again, this is one of my favorite, if not my favorite, under $100 citrus fragrances. So definitely recommend this one, again, for the price point. I think it is pretty underrated, and honestly, that's why it's hard to find. But definitely check it out if you're into Dior Homme Cologne, but you're after something with maybe a little bit more. So again, from the house of Dior, that was Eau Sauvage Cologne. Okay, so we are on to the last fragrance now, and there was no order to this list. I probably should have clarified that earlier, completely random. Nonetheless, this one is coming from the house of Bulgari, and it is Tigar, which you guys, I'm assuming, oh, predicted that this was gonna be here on this list. I've talked about this fragrance numerous times. It is very much known for being a grapefruit fragrance. And actually, there's only three listed notes on Fragrantica, which are the grapefruit, the Ambroxan, and then some woody notes. Honestly, I think there are more notes in here than that. I think it's just kind of that like modern ploy that these companies are doing to try and hide notes so that they, they don't get cloned or whatever. I think it is a more complex fragrance than that, but that's all we really have to go off of. You can definitely get the grapefruit. It is a very sweet grapefruit, and I'm not sure where that sweetness is coming from. I guess it could be the grapefruit itself, but it almost smells too sweet to just be grapefruit. I feel like maybe they're putting some like vanilla in here, or maybe it's coming from the Ambroxan, I'm not really sure. There is definitely a woodiness to this as well, and it is kind of salty aquatic, but again, this is mostly about the grapefruit. So if you want something like that, you know, a sweeter grapefruit, kind of woody, kind of aquatic fresh, this is a really good one. It is a beast mode fragrance as well. I think it is a very expensive fragrance and a lot of people rag on it because of that. But this thing has absolute beast mode performance. You can do a couple of sprays. It's gonna last over 12 hours on your skin. For a citrus fragrance like that, that is no joke. So for me, I was happy with the price point based on the performance and then how much I do like the scent. But again, you guys can go the clone route as well. I know there are quite a few clones of this one, which I have not tried, but from others I've heard they are pretty good overall. But again, we're not talking about clones here. We are talking about this one right here called Tiger, and this is an awesome, awesome grapefruit. So if you guys are able to sample this one, I definitely recommend it. And again, from the house of Bulgari, this was Tiger. Well, there you guys go. That was my top five grapefruit forward fragrances list. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you guys did, I would really appreciate dropping a like just to show your support. And then that way more people can see my videos on YouTube. Additionally, if you wanna write a comment, maybe just let me know your thoughts as well as some new video ideas or topics, that would be great too. And since you're down there doing all that stuff, if you've not already, if you could hit the subscribe button and then the bell notification, that would be amazing. That way you stay up to date on new videos whenever they get released going forward. But with all that out of the way, that's all I really have for you guys today. So I hope you have a good one. Stay healthy, stay wealthy, and smell great.